So who's the one combiner in all the Transformers that everybody remembers? Superion, of course. Nah, I'm just kidding. So this is going to be the video review of my original Generation 2, kind of a contradiction, uh, Constructicon set. So we're going to start off with Scavenger. And uh, one caveat before I uh, go further into the view, I don't have any of their guns anymore. They're individual little rifles because I was an actual child and you know no one can be arsed to remember where you put those tiny little guns that don't store anywhere on the robots and outside of you know in their fists so this is scavenger all these guys are about the same size and again I have to do the the size comparison so about as big as a state as a tape measure I'm sorry I can't get anything more uh, accurate than that or uh, you know more detailed because again this thing is just kind of useless so scavenger basic little guy always rocking the little panel head that all these guys seem to have and uh, one thing I do want to point out that for whatever reason the sticker that they used for the Decepticon symbols I know you can't really see that that's still a Decepticon symbol on pretty much all of them it faded about a couple months after I got these toys. <laughs> I don't know why, because the rest of the stickers, uh, they're, they're pretty good. Oh, uh, hmm. Something odd about my Constructicon is that he does have a green shovel. And this is because, as a, as a child, I had a little dog who would always remind me why it's a bad idea to leave your toys on the floor. <laughs> However, I did have a hand-me-down Generation 1 scavenger, so uh, with a little know-how, I uh, swapped out the shovels because I wanted to preserve the look of uh, the original Generation 1 Devastator. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I did have a bootleg set that I spray-painted um, yellow similar to this one, so I could have used that as well, but I ended up just throwing out all those pieces. So yeah, scavenger, kind of a cool little guy. Transforms very simply. Pop his arms in, pop his head down. You should really uh, push these in, the feet, and then rotate them so that the bottom of the foot... Oh, actually it's right like this. So that when you... Oh no, never mind. What am I doing? I do it like this. So that this won't conflict with the little hitch the connection point in his arm, and here you go, little excavator. The whole cabin does move, so that's pretty cool. You can go and pretend to pick stuff up, which is always fun. Actually, I don't know if you can see, but there's a... Uh, get that to focus there. A little bit of clay in there, because, um, you know, kids do stupid things. Alright, the next guy, Mixmaster. Again, the Decepticon symbol has faded a lot. You ever notice that he actually kind of has a truck in his chest there? It's like, here's the front of the truck, here's the wheels, or the, the screws or the wheels. That's kind of cool. The only guy who's not really rocking the panel face, or the panel head, and he's, he's actually quite handsome, I have to say. Uh, does not have the mouth like in the animation model. And uh, same articulation, you know, just rotate his arms around. Extend his legs, and now you have a really long Mixmaster. And you can also just transform him really quickly. And he's a truck. A little yellow cement mixer. And the drum does spin. I don't know where my Generation 1 Mixmaster is, but he also has a little bit of clay stuffed in the, the hopper here. Oh, and I forgot to mention this on uh, Scavenger, I'll go back, but these guys do have an attack mode. You use the pieces of Devastator and just kind of put them in there. And uh, here's your attack mode Mixmaster. Cement mixer with a giant gun sticking out of it with some teeth marks on it. <laughs> Alright, so uh, yeah, here we go. I don't like the sound of that. 
So what you could do with, with Scavenger is you could just stick the, the Devastator arm on here. It did come with uh, little chrome drills you could put in there, but I don't know where those are. Also for the Generation 2 release, they did change it so that there's no longer a mechanism in here for the launcher. And it's just all completely uh, smoothed over and filled in. Also notice that I had to uh, glue this part, so it's at an angle now because somebody decided it was a smart idea to make this entire thing um, hinge around this tiny, tiny plastic joint. Okay, here's the next guy. Long haul. He didn't join this outfit just to be a dump truck. Kinda cool, he's got a bit of a chest there. Poor guy can't really look to the side too much either because of the, the cab of the truck mode. But, you know, kinda cool. He's got same articulation. Very standard uh, dump truck kinda transformer. And I don't feel like I need to explain these transformations. They're pretty simple. Oh, did you ever notice in the show that his head was up all the time, even in uh, truck mode? It's kind of weird. And just stick all this shit together and hope this thing doesn't decide to get locked up because it is an old toy. Yeah. Poor old long hood doesn't really fit together too well in uh, truck mode anymore. He's kind of old and loose. But still, it, kind of fun. You can make him go back and forth. And if you want, you could, you know, just stick something inside his bed, like a, a pen, which doesn't fit in the bed. <laughs> or you could put all their weapons in there, which, you know, I'm sure a lot of people did. And again, he comes with this, um, a thingy. Oh, and if you notice here, these didn't adhere too well at the time, so I actually used scotch tape to keep them on there. And I left it on there because it makes it feel more authentic that way. And what you do is there's just a couple of holes right there that go on these pegs, and you've got dump truck with an attack mode. This is supposed to be missile launchers, but I don't know, they look kind of just like blasters to me. But that's kind of cool. Here's Bone Crusher. He's the mean one. He might hate everybody, but I'm not sure. Poor guy guy kind of has a case of the Popeye arms, unfortunately. And um, I always liked how, uh, with the transition from uh, this being the, the Diaclone figure to being a Transformer, they just kind of stuck the, or wanted you to stick the Decepticon symbol right over an another sticker. You know, very classic. Um, Techie detail as seen as all, on a lot of old Takara SF world uh, tra or Transformers, you know, like or pre-Transformers like uh, Diaclone, Microchange, and stuff like that. Again, he's got a pretty basic transformation. You just do that, pull this whole thing forward, flip up the panel head, straighten these out. There you go. And flip this up. This thing is very loose. In fact, this part is usually broken on most um, ones that kids use. And again, you use a little scotch tape to keep the symbol on there because it was totally coming off. Yeah, and also like most uh, G2 figures, he does have a Tampo printed Decepticon logo to show his faction with the the, the goofy G2 symbol, which I heard is based off of, um, what's his name, Colossus or Clench or whatever his name was. Weird European figure. But yeah, he's got no wheels or anything, so he just kind of push him along and let him rub against the ground. And now we come to Hook, who was named after the character in Peter Pan. Again, he has, uh, he's the only one who actually has a mouth which is interesting. And he also does have very, very loose arms. This is in fact the hook that I got for free from Toys R Us because I kept breaking hooks. 
Uh, and most notably, just the way the arms come in and out, uh, the way they're attached is, uh, you can't really see it, but it's just a, well, I don't know how you would describe it, like where it's just um, two pieces of plastic uh, stuck like this to pop the, the arm on, and those things usually just break inwards and the arm would be useless. So actually I took this guy apart and sanded the uh, interior right here around the, the kind of the armpit area so that these would slide in and out a lot more easily. Also what happened is that I kept breaking the little chrome hook on his back because I would actually try to use it to pick up things. Silly me. Also hook has issues standing up on his own without his little third leg back there. But yeah. Poor hook. Again, has the simple transformation. Just pop everything and just pull this apart. Flip the arms in, and there you go. Got a little crane, and it actually does rotate. And the crane extends, which is fun. You can pretend to pick stuff up again. I wouldn't actually pick stuff up because, again, this hook is just a little piece of chrome plastic, and it's actually a lot more fragile than you think it is. So let's get to uh, hooks attack mode. So you have this thing, which is obviously not a head. And you just slot that in there, and now you've got a little crane with a head with a gun sticking out of it. Not too bad. And once again, come on, faded faction symbol. And finally we have myself. I mean, uh, Scrapper. CTF week, I, I can make that joke too. Yeah, Scrapper, usually the leader of the group, just because um, of things. And uh, he's, again, a basic old school transformer. He does have a, a bit of a backpack sticking out there. But we won't hold that against him. And again, very nice sticker detailing. Everything just kind of fits together and you don't have to put the faction symbol over an existing sticker, <laughs> which is a good thing. Now one thing about his transformation is that you have to push the head in, which is supposed to make these little plastic bits rise out that pushes the, uh, the shovel forward. I find that on mine I really have to just pull these things up individually and then just position everything correctly. So yeah, a very early front-end loader with uh, no actual cab. And this also comes off for some reason. It's not glued in or anything. Which I always thought was kind of weird. He's probably got the uh, the goofiest attack mode, which they did incorporate into his tech spec, where you take Devastator's chest wing. And this might be a G1 chest wing. I think it's a lighter plastic, or a darker shade of purple than the, uh, the other one. And you just pop it on the back. Yeah, there's just a couple of things on the back. And now you've got a flying front end loader who can apparently fly at uh, 60 miles an hour, which seems kind of useless. It's like, hey guys, I'm going to carry something through the air. It's a little silly. So, you know, you got all these guys. Just kind of, let's all pile them together with all their extra bits. When suddenly, dun dun dun, it's bad news, Scrapper. They brought out the heavy artillery. Well, it's time we did the same, only heavier. Can you guess what my favorite episode of Transformers is? <laughs> so let's take this mess and turn it into a giant robot. Or a somewhat giant robot. Pretty basic, all you do is you take Mixmaster, make him look like a foot, and stick this part 
basically right into where his face is, which has got to suck for him. Take Scrapper and just flip his arms down and use the, the shovel of the front end loader as the rest of the foot. And this is why this thing is here, why you have to kind of have the, the head down to lock it in place just to keep this from retracting all the way. And uh, you just pop this right in here and uh, hope you don't get any more stress marks <laughs> from the simple act of doing this. You know, because generation one transformers never break. Take long haul and put them like this. Take this little groin piece and just stick it in there. This is something that always gave me trouble is how to get this thing in here the right way with, you know, out breaking the figure. And I should probably put this on first before putting on uh, Mixmaster and Scrapper. In fact, I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna take these two off and try to get this thing in without breaking my childhood devastator. Wow, I... <laughs> Is there a technique behind this? I remember the instructions were pretty basic. Yeah, because you have to keep you have to keep these in. There it goes. Jeez. How many of these things break all the time? Yeah, gets everybody back into place. There we go, half a robot. And pan up. Take old hook and do the very characteristic pull them apart. And give him a little bifold here. Flip out this little piece here. And the only thing that really keeps him uh, locked like this is when you just shove the, the whole head piece around and that just keeps everything in place. And then we just take these two pegs here and stick them in. Okay, getting a little taller. Take the chest plate and uh, there's this hole here and then there's just this little kind of a bracket there. I've heard that the Diaclone version doesn't even have something, one of these bits here to keep the uh, chest plate on, which has got to suck because this thing really barely ever stayed on when you even got it in there, right? Because it's really just held in by that one peg right there. And let's take our intrepid arm brothers, just to flip out this little die cast piece here. And I stick this on here. Hope I don't break this thing even more, because it, again, it is at a slight angle. Give him his gun, because Devastator has always been right handed. And all you do is you slot this in here. Finally take Bone Crusher and give him, him his arm. All right, you can, you can stick this on here for the attack mode, whatever. Haphazard review. And just slot him into that extended die cast piece and here you go we've got the full generation 2 devastator let's kind of move him back here so you can see he's not really gigantic I mean even this knockoff toy is uh, about his size and uh, it's actually a little bit better built than old devastator is I gotta say, even as a kid, I was kind of afraid to play with him because he's not the most stable of combiners. Uh, say what you will about the Scramble City combiners, but those guys are at least a bit more playable than Old Devastator here. He's he's definitely from that era of um, you know Diaclone and Micro Change figures where, yeah, you know Japanese kids were very I guess they were very uh, polite with their toys, but uh, us burly Americans we would just you know, destroy these things. 
and um, for whatever reason, Devastator can really get his his right arm up, and uh, hopefully. Oh, poor Devastator, you are so old. But his left arm here is actually limited by the the chest wing, which is unfortunate. Actually, it gives him a weird. He, as a whole, he has this strange asymmetrical look to him. He's not quite as um, balanced as some of the other combiners would be. But really, this is a, a classic Transformer. You know, this is the combiner. This is Devastator. This is the guy that gave all the Autobots pause until um, Optimus Prime realized he could just shoot them <laughs> and make them separate. <laughs> well, thanks to Hound and his hologram distracting them. So overall, um, Devastator was not the best play thing that I ever had. I did I did really enjoy him because he does have the whole combining thing going on, and that is really really cool for any kid. It's taking a bunch of robots all about the same size, or uh, the size of several tape measures, <laughs> and putting them together to a big robot. And I know there's a lot of uh, buzz going around by. Uh, some questionable companies who may not be really bootleggers who have made uh, add-on parts for the original Devastator. And I look at those parts, first off, they're more expensive than trying to get a vintage one by itself. <laughs> well, maybe, but um, yeah, they do add better arms and better articulated uh, legs because poor Devastator doesn't really have um, thighs. He just has a plate with legs stuck on it. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, doesn't really look too good from the side there. I guess these are supposed to be his thighs a little bit, but it doesn't quite come together as well. I look at those and I think, well, they, they look kind of cool, but they give you um, articulation for the figure, which Devastator does not really need because um, his feet aren't designed for it. <laughs> so, you know, they try to pose them like dramatically and stuff like that, but... Um, Poor Devastator doesn't have the best footprint, if you know what I mean. And yeah, I guess the, the new heads look nicer. And there's also the whole buzz between uh, a company called Make Toys and, uh, what is it, TFC, TF whatever, Fans Project. I don't care. I don't buy those toys. At least not anymore. Uh, making their own faux Devastators with uh, much bigger figures, which all seem to have weird quality control issues when they come out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would rather prefer that uh, Takara Tomy or Hasbro actually make a modern Devastator themselves. But, you know, the problem is, is that the, the market doesn't seem to want to support a classics Devastator. Yeah, it's, it's a shame, but if anything, you can always still pick up one of the Generation 1 or Generation 2 Devastators. They did come in orange also, uh, not in my neck of the woods, but I believe in uh, maybe Canada or Europe. Or maybe other parts of America, I'm not sure. They also had, came in uh, a weird, cheesy orange color. I don't really mind the yellow, it looks pretty good. I mean, rail construction vehicles are a shade of yellow, maybe not this shade of yellow, but a little more realistic for, you know, transforming robots, but still. Either way, and of course Devastator is the most bootlegged of all <laughs> Transformers out there, so he's pretty easy to find in uh, multiple sizes. <laughs> so yeah, if you can, pick up a Devastator and transform him and put it on the shelf because he won't do much else. <laughs> he just sits there looking pretty cool. Yeah, still one of my favorite toys. So this has been another review for Collection DX by Andrew, aka VF5SS, and uh, yeah, getting my nostalgia vibe right here. I should end this video before I start crying.